Cambodia, I think. Yeah, let's get into that. Yeah, to ask about anyway. Yeah. Well, the, the first thing uh, is to note that in 1975, in fact, um, just a few days before uh, Saigon falls, uh, Phnom Penh falls to the Khmer Rouge. Uh, the Khmer Rouge, the, uh, the Cambodian communists, essentially. And uh, as I think just about everyone listening to this will know, um, the Khmer Rouge is a very uh, radical and violent uh, communist party. In fact, communism uh, is almost kind of secondary to their ideology. Uh, well, I might walk that back if I had spoke to someone who studies Ca Cambodia more closely than I do, but they're very uh, rabidly nationalist. And it's a specifically anti-Vietnamese nationalism. Yeah, Sean, uh, really maybe actually give us two minutes on what the Khmer Rouge's ideology actually appears to be. Yeah. So as I say, it's a very anti-Vietnamese ideology. Uh, the Khmer Rouge see themselves as the inheritors of Angkor, uh, Angkor Wat, but the uh, what they call it, the polity of Angkor, the state uh, of Angkor. And the Angkor Wat, this uh, extremely impressive a thousand-year-old set of temples, really a, a kind of um, capital city lost to time, uh, is central to what they see themselves as trying to achieve, which is essentially um, to bring back Cambodia to its perceived former glory. And they want uh, to uh, have their names in history, in the world history, as the ones who could achieve uh, in Cambodia, the most formidable uh, communism in the world. They regard uh, most of the Mekong Delta as rightfully belonging to Cambodia. And there is some basis for that, actually, because Vietnamese settlers only arrived uh, about 400 years earlier in the 1600s. Um, but it's a, a kind of revancus project. And they're trying to bring back into being um, this mostly imagined, because we don't actually know all that much about it, a uh, glorious Cambodian civilization that um, existed a thousand years prior. Vietnamese, uh, ethnic Vietnamese in particular living in Cambodia are seen as the enemy. Uh, and they have historically, I suppose, tended to play a predominant role in uh, commercial activity in Cambodia. Um, the, the way that they're perceived is perhaps not unlike how ethnic Chinese communities are historically perceived elsewhere in Southeast Asia. Um, we even see some signs of this manifesting itself before the Khmer Rouge take over. But, um, you know, subject to years of intense American bombardment, they're, uh, they're radicalized, they draw on people uh, affected by the destruction.